NFL Week 12 Survivor Pools going strong. You're still alive in your pool. That's why you're here to get the best analysis in the business. It is Scratching and Surviving coming up next. All right, everybody. We are Scratching and Surviving all the way to the top and hopefully taking home the big prizes. I am Statsational, former FX trader on Wall Street, now a professional sports better and professional DFS player, bringing you the inside and insights into survivor pools, how to get yourself an edge. Can't necessarily guarantee you a win, but we'll get you that advantage that you need over the long haul to become a winner in survivor pools. Of course, brought to you by the Sharp app. You can download the Sharp app by going to sharp.app, use code SURVIVOR35 and or SURVIVE35, and that's going to get you 35% off. So if you enjoy this kind of content, of course, like and subscribe. But also, if you are into sports betting, you're going to want the Sharp app. We've got a lot of great tools, analysis, and more great things to come at the Sharp app. So check us out. Once you download it, head over into the Discord and say hello. Without any more about that, let's dive into this week in the NFL and what we've got going on in Survivor. We're at the point now in Survivor pools. We've really been at that point, but certainly now. Last week, not that much of a chaotic week. We, we lost just a few people probably in your pool, if any at all, depending on the size of the pool. In Circa, they lost just, uh, I believe, six people. They're down to 100 uh, or down to 99 now in the Circa pool. Uh, that is the big one. And we'll see now. This week, we've got a lot of big favorites uh, that we could pick again. But, of course, there's some strategy involved in how we're going to go about it. When you are down to just very few people, that's the point where we could start thinking about hedging. As I always tell you guys, we want to try when we're down to a few amount of people um, and certainly in a head to head situation, we want to try to take the most optimal path we can. That's typically going to be taking the largest favorite we possibly can each and every week. But when you have options, you do want to look two to three weeks out and try and pick the most optimal path. That will not always be maybe this week's number one or top pick. It may not even be next week's, but we may have to kind of change who we're picking in order to have the most optimal pick for uh, that week. And that may put us behind the eight ball uh, for one week. Let's just uh, take, for example, this week, let's say you had Kansas City and Washington available to you. Well, Kansas City would be the number one pick here based on the win probability, but you'd probably want to take Washington and save Kansas City for next week, in which case you're taking not much of a lesser team in Washington and you'll have a big advantage in taking Vegas, especially if you didn't, or taking Kansas City over Vegas, especially if you did not have Detroit available to you. So things like that, you're going to want to pay attention to as we look at the uh, at the upcoming weeks, and as we are getting closer and closer to you winning your pool. The other thing you want to look at is taking the Sunday night or the Monday night game if it fits into what we're doing. So if it's close between a couple of teams, and one team is playing the Monday night game. The other is playing the 1 o'clock game on, on Sunday. We're going to want to kind of lean more towards that later team because it's going to give us an advantage in hedging. The later the game is, the more information we're going to have as far as other people in our pool potentially being knocked out, giving us the, uh, the advantage of being able to hedge for a more proper amount than we would have if we had an earlier game. So just some things I want to throw at you. This week, we really don't have that advantage of any of the late games being all that good for Survivor, but keep it in your mind as we progress throughout the season, that you're going to want to look at that. All right, let's dive into this week. Kansas City is the top team as far as win percentage goes. You can see they're playing at Carolina, even on the road. They're going to be the biggest favorite this week, or at least that's how it looks right now on Wednesday. But as I mentioned earlier, they have Vegas next week. Now, if you're in the Circa pool, a lot of people in Circa have been saving Kansas City for the Thanksgiving week. The rules in Circa are you have to pick the Thanksgiving games or the Black Friday game as a separate week. Same thing goes for Christmas. So you, essentially you have 20 weeks to pick from uh, in Circa, and it, it's really difficult because we've got a very limited amount of games between Thanksgiving and Black Friday. There's only four games. Now, for much of the season, this Kansas City game looked to be the best game. As Chicago has slipped, Detroit, and Detroit has really become maybe the best team in the league right now, uh, that has now pushed its way to uh, one of the picks for Thanksgiving, but a lot of people, including uh, last week, a lot of people took Detroit already. So if you didn't take them before last week, there was a good chance you did take them last week. If you have held on to them beyond 
uh, the last couple of weeks, you still have them, then you're more than likely going to want to hold on to them if you're in Circa for the Thanksgiving pick because most people will be on Kansas City. You're going to get almost as good an option here with Detroit and give yourself a lot of leverage. But that's nuanced. There's only 99 people left. I know a few of you do watch the show. so uh, And you guys are probably more than aware of those in the Circa are more than aware of that. But that's the route I would go if I had both Detroit and Kansas City available to me. I'd be looking at uh, Kansas City this week and then Detroit next week in Circa. And then, of course, you've got to make a Sunday or Monday pick as well. And that's right now Washington, Houston, and Denver, Tampa. Those are the top teams here uh, as far as that goes. But for, mo- for the rest of you guys, if you're in a small pool, you're down to heads head to head, you're going to probably – you're going to be looking at – if you had Kansas City, you're going to be obviously looking at Kansas City as a pick. But like I mentioned before, if you had Washington, the optimal path would be to take Dallas – take Washington against Dallas and then take Kansas City next week. Now, if you had Detroit, of course, that's going to add uh, into the equation. You've got – you're in really good shape if you've got Kansas City, Washington, and Detroit. Uh, a lot of you are not going to have this option. A lot of you have taken Kansas City. You've taken Washington. Many of you have really taken Washington already. And then the third best team here – is going to be Houston. But let's quickly just look at Kansas City. Outside of the next two weeks, they're at Cleveland, which is a potential game, but it's really these next two weeks that we're going to want to focus on Kansas City. So if you don't take them this week, you're going to probably have to take them next week. Um, Washington, Dallas this week at home. Obviously, it's going to be a strong pick. But next week, home for Tennessee. Potential to take them there next week. Um, But like I said, if you did have Washington available to you, more than likely you're going to want to take them this week it's going to depend obviously on what some of your other teams are uh houston they've got tennessee at home fairly popular pick almost 18 percent of pools are taking houston a lot of people who had them last week had some better options were able to hold off on them i know i suggested to some people only had houston and miami to go ahead and take houston last week because they were going to be picked less and then take miami this week for that same reason Uh, It did not work out in the sense that Miami was able to win their game, but we'll see if by flip-flopping those two and kind of staying on the lesser side of pick percentage, if we can gain some leverage if Houston were to lose this week and we can get by with Miami. So those of you who did that halfway through has not worked out. If both Houston and Miami win this week, it's really no blood. And uh, obviously the ideal situation for you would be a Miami win and a Houston loss. But when we look at Houston – You've got them at Jacksonville next week, but we see there's a lot of options here uh, for next week. We'll, we won't talk about the Circa anymore, but you've got Casey in Detroit, which many of you have taken already. Washington, probably a lot of you have taken, but you've got the Denver, kind of like Denver, Houston, Tampa grouping here. You've probably got one of these teams available to you, and you're going to be on one of those teams next week. If not, you're going to really start, start to get where it gets tricky here in Survivor, and you're looking at Minnesota, Green Bay, Buffalo, all these teams, and not all, they're all home but they're going to be in four-point or less type of point spreads, and that's where it gets really tricky. But eventually you're going to have to win some of those games in order to win a survivor pool. So back to this week, Houston at Jacksonville next week, potentially, you know, again, let's just make sure that our pick next week is not going to be really one of these worst teams, and we had another team available to us that we could take. Uh, But the odds are pretty good. If you had Denver or if you got Tampa Bay, we could use them next week. Um, so there's really not that many teams that we'd really want to use this week uh, over a team that we'd, you know, we'd use next week because if it's a team that we'd want to use next week in here, we probably still have them uh, available. So any of these, what I mean is any of these kind of secondary teams, so Tampa getting 8%, Denver getting 6.5%. If our option was between Houston and these teams, um, we could – potentially take one of these teams and then take Houston next week, it would be suboptimal. But um, in larger pools, you could go that way, right? In smaller pools, we're strictly just kind of going down the list and what's going to be my most optimal path uh, for the next two or three weeks. So then we're not looking at these teams. We're going to be looking at these teams up top and then figuring out what our best option would be after taking that team for week 13. So Houston at Jacksonville next week, and then really not a whole lot of other options until maybe at Tennessee in Week 18. If you're in a small pool, you're not worried about that. If you're in a medium-sized pool, 30, 40, 50 people left, you're probably not worried about that either. Uh, You're really only going to start looking all the way to Week 18 if you're in a larger pool. You've got hundreds of people. Some of you even have uh, a 1,000-plus people in your really large pools. In those pools, you're going to really have to go a little crazy with your pick to try and hope 
from massive chaos where you're the, one of the few standing in order to make uh, some serious money in those pools. But, listen, even if you chop it, it's still plus money, right? It's just not the hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever your pool is worth that you were hoping to make when you joined that pool. Detroit at Indianapolis and then home for Chicago next week. So, obviously, a much better situation next week than this if you have uh, Detroit available to you. But we're going to have them at Chicago in Week 16, which, of course, we're uh, projecting that is going to be a pretty good game depending on what you've got left uh, come Week 16. We could see Buffalo is going to be a big favorite if you haven't taken them. Green Bay is a good chance that you have Green Bay available to you. Arizona, most of you are going to have available. They've got Carolina. So we've got options. Cincinnati, a lot of you will have available to you, uh, will be an option. So really not too many other uh, other opportunities here with Detroit outside of the next couple of weeks. So you really should be done with Kansas City and Detroit by the time we get to week 14. Um, most likely you'll be done with Washington as well and probably Houston. So unless you've got all of these teams available to you, most of you do not you're probably going to have these top four teams are probably going to be gone in the next two weeks for just about everybody in all pools. Miami, New England, they're getting 14% of the picks right now. The thing here is look at the future value. They do not have many games that you're going to want to take them, maybe no games. Uh, you know, if you trust them at home against the Jets, I don't know about that. At Green Bay, certainly not. At Houston, San Francisco, no. At Cleveland, eh. You know, it's week 17. We'll worry about that when we get there. And then at the Jets, probably not. Um, Denver, we talked about potentially you may need them here next week, depending on who else you have left. At Vegas, if this is your best option of the week, then you're going to want to look and see if you've got a good option for week 13. You may have to save Denver for week 13. It's going to totally be dependent upon what other teams you have available and try to get to that optimal path going but Denver outside of the next two weeks maybe at home against Indianapolis in week 15 that's going to be your next next best option let's look at week 15 here if you have Baltimore available they're at the Giants pretty good game uh Kansas City like I said we should be done with Kansas City in the next couple of weeks this Arizona one will be interesting though home against New England if you have Arizona you probably do that would be a good spot to take them much better than that Denver play uh Minnesota is possible that you have them home for Chicago San Fran home for the Rams uh the way San Francisco's playing, that doesn't look like all too great a game. But you're going to have some options there uh, next week. But, of course, go on Survivor Grid yourself and uh, leave comments down below. I'll be able to help you guys out if you can give me a list of the teams that you've taken. And certainly if you're in a small amount of people pool left, I want to know what your opponents have taken as well so that I could kind of uh, figure out what they may take and, and what might be the best optimal path for you based on your opponent and what you have left. So we see Tampa getting 8.1% uh, right now at the Giants, at Carolina. You know, the next three weeks are potential picks. So one of these next three weeks, you're probably going to wind up taking Tampa in a lot of pools. But we look at week 14. If you haven't taken Philly yet, they're going to be the pick here in week 14. Tampa right now the second best option. San Fran gets Chicago uh, in that week 14. Pittsburgh gets Cleveland at home. So you'll have a few options. You've probably got a couple of these teams available to you. So, again, let's map it out. If you have to use Tampa, you don't have any of these uh, these teams above them available, you could potentially do it this week. I said week 14, um, you know, we've got that Carolina and then Tampa, but potentially you may have some other teams. But if you've got uh, if you've got Pittsburgh or San Francisco, you should be OK. At least you'll have a decent pick. Can't guarantee any of those picks are going to win, but you'll have a pick with a decent point spread um, in that week. So let's dive into the spreadsheet. And we'll talk about that here for a minute, and then maybe we'll head back on Survivor Grid. So when we look at the spreadsheet, 0% future value, and you know when I do it at 0%, that is for those of you in very small pools, maybe even heads up. This threshold column is really starting to come into play in a lot of these pools. What the threshold column is going to tell you is it's basically just taking a, a, it's taking a, a ratio here between um, – the pick percentage and what the win probability is. And it's just trying to give you an idea of at what percentage does a team need to be at for a win percentage in order for me to get off of this team. So really we'd want to look at Kansas city this week in most pools. If you were in a pool where you were down to five to 10 people, let's say you had 10 people left in your pool and you knew three of them, right. were going to take 
the uh, Kansas City this week, then you'd want to only go against Kansas City. So we'd change this to 30%. And you'd want to take a team that was 78% win percentage or better. So really you're looking at either Houston or Washington in that situation. There's just not enough people taking uh, Kansas City. But if we thought six out of the 10 were taking Kansas City, now suddenly that number drops. And then Kansas City really doesn't become a smart play because we're getting so much leverage here. So then almost all of these favorites from Tampa up become an option in order to get off of Kansas City. What it's really telling you is in a small pool, what is my what is the probability? What's the where can I get off of the team that everybody else is on? So it, it may not come into play here this week because we don't have a real clear cut team that's garnering a lot of attention by everybody. It, it, you know, as these weeks go on, though, um, that could be the case. So what I want you to always pay attention here to the threshold when you're down to very few people. I think this number is going to be helpful to you guys. So obviously 0% future value. We're looking at Washington, Kansas City. Kansas City really has the highest win percentage here. They're going to pop off as the the best choice. And if you are in a small pool, we've gone over this. We really want to look at not just who the best choice is this week, but if we don't use the best option, if Washington as the second best option gets us to Kansas City next week, and that is the, our best path, then of course we're going to go that way. But just always be of the mentality. We're looking to be optimal when we're down, especially heads up. Let the other person have to get off the optimal play and get them on a team. Let them take Houston this week when we're taking Washington or Kansas City. Now, it's only a few few points below uh, as far as win probability goes. But if we do that consistently, we have a slight edge. And that's all we could really do is just move to a slight edge. You know, it's like if you are a – if you know anything about counting cards – um, and when you play blackjack, all you're really doing when you're a card counter is moving the slight one and a half percent, let's say, edge that the house has in blackjack and really flipping that into your favor. So that means every hundred dollars you bet, you you are expecting to win a dollar fifty. So that really doesn't sound like a lot, but that's really all the edge that the the house has. And it's really only a slight edge that we can put ourselves in. Sometimes it's a good edge. We can get ourselves a really uh, huge advantage because our opponent is so bad. And that could very well be. If, as long as we play solidly, you know, it's like playing poker. If you play just a really solid style of poker against a poor, a bunch of poor players, you really don't have to do anything fancy over time. Just knowing um, how to play solid poker and, and not doing anything crazy is going to win you. You're going to be plus EV over time. So that's what we're looking to do in these type of pools. Allow your opponents, <coughs> excuse me, to be suboptimal. It may not work in this pool. doesn't guarantee that Kansas City is going to win when you have them, but it gives us the edge over our opponents. And that's all we're really looking for. When we flip this to 25%, it really doesn't change all that much, and it's really – most weeks it's not going to. Uh, but 25% is where I want to be if I'm looking at a medium-sized pool. I've got 40, 50 people or so left in my pool. I want to look at this. It's a pool that's not necessarily going to end in the next couple of weeks, but it's also probably not going to go – all the way to week 18, but be cognizant. You want to not only look out the next two or three weeks like you may when you're head-to-head, you want to look out a few more weeks when you're in a situation like this. Just make sure you're not putting yourself, kind of pigeonholing yourself in a corner when um, maybe five weeks out, the only pick that you have is the pick that you chose this week, and you could have taken a pick that was not necessarily all that far off from the pick that you made uh, this week. It's like the difference between... Um, taking, well, let's look at Survivor Grid, and uh, we'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. So if you had, uh, if you needed, let's say, Minnesota for Week 15, because you you look at it here, you've used Arizona, you've used uh, Kansas City, or maybe you're saving Arizona for Week 16, you use Kansas City, you used, uh, you used Baltimore early in the season, and, you know, perhaps you're looking at um, only being, able, you, you know, the only real good team that you could take here is um, is Minnesota. Which one did I say? Was it De- uh, Minnesota? Whatever it was, I'm forgetting which way I went with it. But you know, you look at uh, you looking out into the future and getting yourself kind of handcuffed. Where the teams this week, you know, Denver and Miami and Tampa, they're all kind of close to each other by 
maybe taking one of these teams now when you could have taken one of the other teams and looking at a future week where you don't have maybe your second best option from that team is way below what the option is this week it would not be ideal so hopefully i didn't confuse you there i think i was confusing myself a little bit but uh we'll head back to the spreadsheet so at the 25 percent we see kind of houston as the uh, third choice talked about houston a little bit more than likely if you have houston uh this is going to be it you're going to wind up taking them this week uh just go back to survivor grid houston this week let's kind of sort it again is with Tennessee, if we had Houston and Miami still available, we'd probably go ahead and take Miami this week. Odds are pretty good. You don't have both of those teams available to you. So Houston, you've got Jacksonville, and then that's pretty much going to be it until week 18. Um, so, yes, that is why when we add a, 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 the future value 25%, they kind of pop up here as the third best play, with Miami being the fourth best play. We jump this up to 100%. And we'll see that Miami becomes the number one play and Houston the number two play. Now, 100% is when we're looking at these larger pools. We didn't talk uh, – did I say Houston-Pittsburgh becomes the second, uh, the number one team and Miami co- becomes the, uh, the second team here? We didn't talk a lot about Pittsburgh yet. And if you look at Pittsburgh, while they, they are showing less future value because they're playing a lot of the better teams, they've got Philly, Baltimore, Kansas City coming up. Uh, the fact is their home game against Cleveland, which they're on the road against Cleveland this week, their home game against Cleveland is actually better than any future games that you've got on Miami. So if you are in a larger pool, Miami's probably still a better option here. Now, more people are going to be on Miami, but I'd much rather, if I had the choice between Miami and Pittsburgh, take Miami because, as we've shown, probably not going to take Miami again. And Pittsburgh, there's a good chance you're going to want them in Week 14. Now, if you don't have Miami and you want to take Pittsburgh and take a shot taking a team in a larger pool here that um, not a lot of people are going to take, by all means, you're going to have to take some chances. You've got 1,000 people left in your pool. You might want to take Pittsburgh. They only have a 64% chance to win. Uh, They're not a massive favorite here like some of these other teams, but we've got to take some risk and some chances um, in these pools. So I don't mind it as much with Pittsburgh, but, Again, it's going to really be dependent on what you have left, and I'm going to have to hear about that in the comments from you guys. So uh, drop the comments down below. As always, I post these on TikTok as well, so I know you guys in TikTok will be posting comments and asking me questions as well. So uh, always gets difficult this point in the season because you've all got different pools. Some of you are in double elimination. Some of you uh, are just in massive pools. You guys have taken all different lines really to get to the point that you are. And unusual lines, of course, because the real usual, typical, normal, quote-unquote, lines have all been uh, defeated because we've had a really rough year in Survivor as far as people staying in it uh, up until this point. So, uh, as always, drop your comments. Love hearing from you guys. I will answer everyone that I see. And until next week, let's keep on surviving. Let's get one step closer, if not win it, this week. Good luck, guys.